Okay, so I've got my replacement steering wheel. I wrapped it. it. Took me about five, six hours. Now to get this one off, I've already disconnected the battery. Make sure you disconnect the battery because you don't want the airbag going off in your face. Now we gotta get the airbag out and there's two clips in the back here. I got the latches released. I'm gonna disconnect the airbag and then I'll show you how I did it. It's not fun. Basically, you come up through the, the hole in the side here, right? And then you're trying to fish around. Um, the hole comes right up in front of this plate. If you're going back, it won't go in. If you're too far forward, you hit the airbag. So you come up here pretty much straight and you'll, you'll like, Feel the clip and then you just push that in and it releases the airbag. It took me like 10 minutes just to find that clip. So, same thing on the other side, fish around till you find it and then push in. I just use a little pick, it doesn't have to be that long, it's about the length of your finger, more or less. Anyways, so we got that and yeah, disconnect. This wiring harness, there we go. And then it's a 16 millimeter nut, we're gonna remove that. So in order to get the housing off, you gently can release these tabs right here. And they're just, they're like a pressure clip, so nothing too fancy. Pull up, and then um, you'll be able to release the top off. And then the bottom is held on with these clips here. If you push them out and then gently pry it down, you can pop it off. I've seen some tutorials, people jam a screwdriver in here and yank down. I didn't want to break anything. I feel like that's inadvisable. Anyways. So for the steering wheel, to do the retrofit, the harness, you have to splice into this connector right here. So I'm gonna take this out, have a closer look. Um, some people build an extension harness. I'm not really wanting to do that, but so two of these wires um, are the outputs from pins four and six or something, which go into here. Um, this is the connector for the heated steering wheel. You gotta be careful when removing that so you don't damage it. And then we're gonna run a wire that goes back from here. That's the, that's the heated steering wheel button. It goes from here to the console to the shifter. So we're gonna pull all this apart and uh, look over the wiring uh, guides. Two and four. You can see there's a one there and a six there. So I've removed pin two and four. That's two. That's four. And then um, over on this harness here, can I believe it goes into three and two? Okay, so I had this extra wire laying around. I've got red going to number two. Uh, real quick, this is all plugged back in here. I just soldered them on instead of leaving the pins out because I wanted to just reuse the factory pins. Uh, we'll see if it works. If not, I'll have to uh, disconnect it and, and put new pins in. But anyways, red is two, green is four. So you're gonna go two to two and then four into three.
really sure why. Back to drawing board. All right, so after doing a bunch of form reading, follow me here, this will take a minute to explain. For some reason, even if you have the proper connectors here, uh, when these are plugged into the back of them, they wire into here, it doesn't want to work. Basically, it's pin four and pin six, and then it goes to one and three on the actual paddle shifter, and then the middle one goes to ground. So it's, do this again. On the connector here, pin four and six, they go to one and three on the paddle shifters, and then two goes to ground. Now on the back of here, down to the connector again, it's pin two and four, and then to the middle two pins, so two and three. Um, I've got it all connected now. The shifter's working. I'm going to basically build another wiring harness for this um, to bypass the multifunction controls and make it all work. And once that's done, I will test it all and I'll show you that. Done. So I'm gonna clean this all up, make sure these are nicely insulated so I don't get a short. But basically I just bypassed the paddles. So we're running into four and six. And then you gotta run to ground. So I've got a ground wire, which is the middle pin on each of the paddle connectors. <sighs> and then uh, we've got it wired up so that this one is pull the upshift and then this one's pull the downshift, but I can also push to do the opposite. So I've left it fully wired up, and there you have it. So here's the steering wheel. Time to finish this up, install the airbag, and then we'll be good to go. Put the console back together, the shielding back on, tuck all the wires, and then test to see if our heated steering wheel is working. Just to give a bit more clarification on how I wired this, I bypassed the multifunction controls because the paddles weren't working correctly when those were connected through that. So the left paddle, which is your downshift, I wired into a pin four, and then the right paddle, which is upshift, uh, into pin six on the clock spring connector. And then you have to wire the middle wire from each to a grounding point. Um, moving on to the extension behind the clock spring to the actual shifter, uh, you take pin two and pin four and extend them, and those go into pin two and pin three on the transmission uh, harness by the shifter. So here's the diagram. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I hope it's fairly clear. Um, it can be pretty tricky when you try to do this, so just take your time and make sure you've double checked everything. There you have it, fully installed, paddles and everything, consoles back together. Now all that's left to do is take her for a rip. Stay tuned for a video with my impressions of the steering wheel retrofit and the Alpina Flash. That's all for now, thank you for watching.